Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19. I appreciate those that show up here on Tuesday night for the prayer meeting. Amen. Two or more here. It's just been powerful. Very good. Blesses me. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19. Amen. This is, uh, I just realized I'm moving into my 28th year of pastoring. That's, a, that's quite a while, you know. And, and it, Actually, I started preaching full-time when, in 1986. So when, when were you born, Joseph? 85. Amen. Well, you had me by one year there, pup. Amen. So uh, it's been a, a great journey for me. I really enjoyed it. But I've always loved saying this. Are you comfortable? Yeah. Do you know when I preach in other churches, I teach them this? I aggravate them just for a little bit so they don't forget me. Amen. I, uh, after church today, I mean in the morning, David and I are going to head to Oklahoma City. Many of you know that Bishop Tony Miller uh, passed away last week. He had a heart attack and died. He was 68 years old. And Bishop Tony's preaching in this church, loves his church, loved me. As a matter of fact, he called me last Friday, and we talked on the phone for probably 30, 45 minutes, and he just called me out of the blue. He's a man that's preached in 75 nations. He has uh, probably over 1,000 pastors that are connected with him and consider him their pastor. So uh, it's going to be quite an honor, you know, and I've had a, a grieving time this week trying to, to uh, assimilate it because when a church, this church is about 1,500, 2,000 people hit the church that he pastors, plus he does all this traveling. You can imagine that, you know, you, uh, you talk to him one day, and he's gone the next, how this church is going to have to deal with it now. So we're praying for, for wisdom and all the things. And Tony taught me a lot of stuff. One of the things he taught me is God is preparing you for what he has prepared for you. Amen. And God, everything you're going through in life is prepare you for something that he has prepared for you. So when we speak, when we talk, you know, you, you glean from people all the time. And I will miss him because he spoke into my life. Amen. As I get older, I look for those type men, amen, that can speak into my life and help me out. So. They're praying for us as we head toward the funeral tomorrow in Oklahoma City. 28 years. Man, that's a long time. Been through a lot of problems, a lot of successes, a lot of blessings. Amen. And through it all, you know, the church has been with me. And what has always helped me is the Word, the Word of God. Amen. Melissa, good to have you and John back. Amen. The Word of God. And, you know, what I'd formerly preached begins to echo in my ears. And I go back over and I think to myself, amen. It had not been for the, the word of God, I think I would have filled out some funeral papers to the ministry a long time ago. But I decided, you know what, let me stay with this. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 19 says this. Speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. It is biblical for you to talk to yourself. Let me say it like this. Have you ever said to yourself, self? Have you ever done that? Say it with me. Have you ever said to yourself, self? There are times you got to talk to yourself. you got to have a little common sense with all the things that are going on in life. You know, I ask myself, self, when it comes to climate change, we're supposed to follow the science. Do you know, I saw a report this week that if every nation on the planet of the earth did the regulations in which they're asking for, we could never change the climate. It is what it is. Amen. It's always going to be that way. We couldn't destroy this climate if we wanted to. But there's that science that goes out. So I'll say it again. When it comes to my, so when I ask myself, self, when it comes to climate change, we're supposed to follow the science. But when it comes to gender, we're expected to ignore science, common sense, reality, and nature. As a matter of fact, our, our new government now has a female vice president, but we're not allowed to call her ma'am or female. They have taken that out. of. They've taken away the mom, the dad, brother, sister, ma'am. So you can't even celebrate the fact you finally got a female vice president because you knocked it out of the way. Now, it's, it, it, I guess it's it. I don't know. But they, they've removed that out of the way. So I say these things to myself. When David's family was taken, the Philistines raided, took his family away from him, amen, as he was also raiding, and his men wanted to stone him. He said to his self, self, be encouraged, amen. As a matter of fact, 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 5, it talks of that. It says that his two wives were taken, and David was greatly distressed. The people spake of stoning him. 
His own people wanted to stone him because the soul of all the people were grieved. Every man and his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Sometimes you've got to say to yourself, self, be encouraged. You've got to talk to yourself. There's going to be a time you're not going to find a preacher. You're not going to find a friend. You're not going to find. You're going to have to encourage yourself. Amen. You're going to have to talk to you. Hallelujah. Look yourself in the mirror and say, self. Amen. Be encouraged. Amen. Stay with us. Say, Father, I love you. Thank you for the word of God. Begin to uh, uh, change our mind about things. Begin to work through us. Let the word of God change us. In Jesus' name, and everyone shout. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. As a matter of fact, when I, if I titled this message anything, it was you ever said to yourself, self, what if they're wrong? What if they're wrong? And you got to say this because we are swallowing, not the church world, not the church world I know, not the little country church I know, but the world I see around me is swallowing uh, the news, they're swallowing the science, they're swallowing the, everything that's being said. Even the school system is promoting things to, for people to swallow. You don't have to swallow that. Amen. You need to say to yourself, self, what if they're wrong about what they're saying? And there's a, a biblical precedence for that. Amen. What if they're wrong with the medical system? If the test comes back positive, you have a right to a specialist to get a second opinion. Now, I'm not talking about just the virus. I'm talking about whatever they say in your life. you got a, a chance to go back and get a second opinion. Many times we just listen to the first one, and we go with that. Uh, it's about, uh, and I've been kind of blown away because people come to me and they say, Pastor, I had a false positive and a positive negative. And I'm going, I'm so confused. Why don't you just say you ain't got it or you got it? Amen. Why do we got to do that? I know a guy that last week, last week on a Monday got vaccinated. On Friday, he tested positive. Somebody help me. Amen. I'm a little confused about all the science on all of this. So there are times I say to myself, self, somebody say self with me. What if they're wrong? What about the judicial system? I've known a little bit about it. If a defendant is not satisfied with the final verdict, they have a right to appeal the decision. The defendant can ask for a retrial before the court of appeals and search for a second opinion. Amen. What if they're wrong? How many times has somebody been incarcerated because they didn't have a slick lawyer? Because they didn't have the money. Amen. And they were put in jail. And, I, you know, I, I, my daughter, she works in a prison. I asked her about that. She said, Dad, you know, I, I know some. I really believe it's innocent. Others, I don't know. But the bottom line is they were put in there. What if it's a crooked judge? you got a right to ask for a second opinion. Can I get an amen? And in life, you need to do that. The Scripture teaches us in Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. And when I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ for the accuser of our brothers who accuses them before God day and night, has been hurled down. They overcame him, and you know the scripture, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Amen. They stayed with the course. And I, I read this in Hebrews 11, in chapter 12, men of, and women of God that stayed with it and pressed through. But the issue was the accuser. That we have an accuser. Satan is that. He accuses. It literally means to slander, to oppose with the intention, to hold one down, to seize and to lay hold on, or to prevent one from reaching his full potential. Your sin, my sin, our failures, our missing the mark, have hold, they hold us back. They hold us down. We remember them. And we say to ourselves, well, I can't press it. We say to ourselves, Self, I can't go into ministry. I can't press into this. I can't do that. Remember my past and where I came from. There's an accuser trying to hold you back because of your past. And you've got to make up your mind, amen, to talk to yourself and realize, first, he's going to slander us before God. He's accusing you all the time before God. Second, he will slander us before ourselves. Uh, David said, in Psalm 51, speaking of his relationship with Bathsheba, he said, and the death of Uriah, her husband, my sin is ever before me. Do you know the truth of the matter is, I really don't need the devil to remind me of my sins. I, I seem to do a pretty good job remembering what I've done and how many times I've screwed up, made mistakes, or missed the mark. Amen. He'll accuse us to others. John chapter 8, verse 10 tells us that a woman was caught in the very act of adultery. They pulled her in. And, and, they, they, you know, and again, that whole story is kind of mind-blowing because I say to myself, where's the man? Where's the man? It takes two to tango. They found her, amen, they caught her, and they, I believe it was a, a setup. I believe they knew that she was lonely and down, and they set her up, amen, they bring her in before Jesus, they drag her in. They want to stone her, they're accusing her. There's always people that want, and this is what bothers me about what's going on. I, I saw it last year like I've never seen it. People turning on one another, turning in one another, 
Amen. If I know that you got something and the government wants me to tell on you, I ain't saying a word. My family were bootleggers. We learned to keep it quiet. Amen. You don't talk about stuff like that. You don't just acknowledge it. But people want to squeal on one another and tell on one another. Where did you get that? And, and did, 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 did that come from this place over here? And they accuse and accuse. And even though it might seem real, a little light, it hurts. And here's a woman being beat down, accused. And the scripture says, Jesus, what? Rode in the sand. Amen. They ain't got time to preach on all this, but he rode in the sand. And, and after he rode in the sand, the Bible says, from the oldest accuser down, left. I believe he wrote the oldest accuser's sin in the sand. And then wiped it out and wrote some more and wiped it out. Amen. And they all began to drop their rocks. And then he says, where's thine accusers? There's nobody left to accuse you. Then he said, go and sin no more. Amen. It's, it's, uh, this atmosphere of accusations has to stop. Amen. Particularly in the house of God. We'll try to accuse God. Amen. He, the accuser tries to accuse God by saying, if God loved you, then you wouldn't be going through what you're going through. I found out a long time ago, you, we, go through, we go through things because of choices or choices of others. Amen. Sometimes we get caught in their whirlwind. And, that, and it happens. And sometimes it's our own choices. But by the way, what if the devil's right? What if he's right and we're guilty? Honestly, we are. We're all guilty. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. The scripture says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So what's important in my life is to learn how to confess. Confess is a good thing. Not to you. Amen. I love you too much to tell you my stuff. And I don't want to hear your stuff. Amen. I'm not your priest. Hallelujah. I'm your preacher. Pastor. Thank you, darling. Amen. That's the little sister got on to her grandpa. She, she, he called me preacher. She said, he ain't preacher. He's pastor. Amen. That was sweet, kind, and wonderful right there. I tell you what. Amen. If we confess, 1 John 2, 2, 2, 1 and 2 says, My little children, these things I write to you that you, that you sin not. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation. In other words, he's the sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world so here we got an accuser and we got an advocate amen so in heaven you got an accuser that's always accusing you bringing up your past putting you down but over here you got an advocate that stands between the accuser and god amen stands for you hallelujah now you can't afford him hallelujah it was his blood that, that, that took your place amen and he stands there and he says whoa back off mercy come on in the courtroom Amen. Didn't grace cover your sins? Hallelujah. Amen. There's times in life you got to say to yourself, self, amen. It's time for you to realize you've been redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. Live like it. Walk like it. Love like it. It's very, very important. What if they're wrong? What if they're wrong? Mark 5, 25. It's an intersection of a man, a priest, a rabbi whose daughter is dying. She's 12 years old. And he's trying to get Jesus to the church. On his way to the church, there's an intersection with a woman who's had an issue in her body for 12 years. It reads like this. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. One of the saddest things in my life right now is knowing that I've had friends that have gone to the hospital in hopes of getting better, and all they're doing is getting worse. Amen. They're, they're contacting things there. They're things that are happening. I, it, I'm not blaming it on the medical world right now. I'm just saying this is what I see happening. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his clothes, his cloak, his hem of his garment, because she thought, if I could just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. She made her mind up that that's what's going to happen. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. And once Jesus turned, and once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him, he turned around in the crowd, and he asked, who touched me? Now, you know, I love this story. And I see the crowd. Was you sleepy, Dave? Young, yeah, yes, so. Amen. Uh, he turned around in the crowd, and the crowd is pressing all around him, but yet he feels something go out of him. That was different than the, the, the touching, than the affection. Something happened here. Who touched me? Amen. Then you see the people crowd against you, his disciples answered. And yet you ask, who touched me? 
Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. There's a twofold dilemma here. First, amen, she was bleeding to death. It was a silent death. Amen. It was, it was taken from her body. Now, I'm going to say some things I can't prove and you can't disprove it. But the bottom line is this. I don't believe she's an elderly woman. Some people have said, I've heard them preach this, that she's elderly. I don't believe that. I believe because of the, the blood disease that she's got, the bleeding that took place, it probably came on her during a time of a change of life. Trying to be careful with this. But she was probably around 12, 13 years old when this came upon her. Amen. And it never stopped. And it moved through her teenage years. And it moved into her... Uh, 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 the, the, uh, the college years, if you want to call it that. So she's 24, 25, 26 years old in my mind. Amen. And she felt herself getting weaker and weaker. Second, just as seriously, she had no one to help. She had nobody to help her. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors, had spent all she had yet Nothing. Amen. Getting better. She just grew worse. So this woman's problem had isolated her, not only from society, but from her family and friends. She could not enter a sanctuary. It had been lonely for 12 years. According to what I understand of history, that if you had a disease like this, you had to be quarantined. You couldn't touch somebody else, and you couldn't let somebody touch you. As a matter of fact, when you went into a room, you had to make sure your mask was on and yell unclean. I'm sorry, I added that one part just for your, make sure you're awake with me. So she goes into a place and she's got to say unclean. She's got to let people know that and announce herself. We feel the same way today. There are times I go, I've walked into a, a restaurants and, 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 and gas stations and, and grocery stores and I feel unclean. Amen. I walk by people and they're like, if you cough, you will clear the aisle. Amen. I mean, it's just the way it is today. We, we have this fear that's gripped us like it did them in that day. And she feels this way. She feels that this loneliness. Amen. It's gripped her for 12 years. You know, we've just gone through one year last year. We're coming into our second. We don't know. But for 12 years, she's this way. She's isolated. She's ridiculed. Her sense of inferiority became even deeper and more hurtful, depressed, suicidal. But what if they're wrong? What if they're wrong? What if I could be healed? What if I could touch? What if I could reach out? What if I could interrupt one of the most important moments of another man's life in order to gain a miracle? And during that time when she heard, the Bible says when she heard Jesus, she heard about Jesus. In other words, somebody saying his name, Jairus was his name, the preacher's name, he's pulling Jesus through the crowd. Jesus, come and help my baby. Jesus, my sunshine is dying. Amen. As he's pulling Jesus through the crowd, she hears the name. And after 12 years, of false illusions and dashed hopes and testing positive. She left her doctors and decided to get a second opinion. Amen. Maybe they're wrong. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd. She touched the cloak because she thought her confession was, she said to herself, Self, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Amen. Faith comes from he about hearing the word of God. Amen. And she heard the word of God himself speaking. She comes to the crowd and she touches the hem of his garment. Well, she heard of Jesus. Immediately, she put aside her fears. How many times have I called out his name and fear dispelled from me? How many times have I called out his name and darkness left me? And at that moment, she said, Self, what if they're wrong? 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8 says, And God is able. He's able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Hebrews 4 16 says, Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. When I read that scripture, when I think of the throne of grace, I think of the hem of the garment of Jesus. Amen. If I could just get to Jesus, if I could just get there with confidence, amen, and pray, I will find mercy. Amen. Receive mercy and find grace to help me in my time of need. She chose to break the rules. Ooh, you know what I love about the little country church? Y'all some rule-breaking people. Amen. I've often said the law of life is always greater than the law of the land. When you see an ambulance running a red light, they just broke the law of the land. But the law of life is greater. This is my whole issue with abortion. Amen. Life is in that womb. And that law of life is greater than the law of the land. You hear the preacher now? 
Amen. So when I stare at this and I see what's going on in life, yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not about getting political and all that other stuff. I can't do that. But I can get biblical. And biblical tells me that a baby is a baby is a baby. Amen. Let that baby live. There's a lot of folk just like me. Amen. In my own, own life that would adopt a child. It's, it's, just, it's just the way it is. Amen. Take them in right now. This woman's greatest fear had become her greatest need. The one thing she wasn't supposed to do was the very thing ultimately she had to do. You can't touch people. You can't get around people. You can't. You, you got to stay quarantined. You got to stay back. The doctor said that there's no hope for you. Amen. It's just the way it is. She spent everything. She broke. She ain't got, what, what I got to lose? I think I'll break the law. Amen. I think I just break the law here. Amen. And believe God for something crazy. Amen. And she reached inside there. And she said to herself, I, herself, if I could just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Her focus changed from what people thought of her. Come on, Joseph. Amen. It's what people thought of her to what Jesus could do for her. She set her eyes on the hem of his garment. You know, the hem of the garment is the part where all the loose ends meet and are tied together. It's the part of the garment. You know, if you looked at this, this here. This here, little shirt, this here little napkin I got here. But here's the hem right here. And all these loose ends would fall apart if it wasn't for the hem. And at times you've got to realize that there, uh, jobs are falling apart. Marriages are falling apart. Your life is falling apart. You've got to reach for the hem that holds on to the loose ends. Amen. And touch them. And that's what she did. If your ministry's there, don't be afraid to ask yourself, what if they're wrong? Now, I'd be amiss if I didn't tell you the rest of the story. You know she got healed. You know, that woman was healed, and Jesus said, uh, be whole from your plague. Amen, your disease. Your faith has healed you. Amen. I can see her whole life changed right there before everybody's eyes. And here's the other thing, and I want you to catch this. And I, I'm not going to go to the Bible. You can look at it in, in Mark chapter 5. But I know the story so well, that there is a man named Jairus who's got hold of the hand of Jesus, and he's pulling him through the crowd. Our hope today goes back to the hope last year and the year before and the year before it's always been jesus there is no other hope amen there's no other place i can put my confidence amen i i can't put it in people i can't put it in our government i can't put I can't do it but i put it in him god's so in love with you he's so in love with the church he puts his trust in you and he looks for you to do the same toward him so here's jairus he, whose faith needs to be built his his faith so when I see this story, it ain't just about the woman with the issue of blood. It ain't about this young lady. It's about the preacher whose daughter is dying. And at the moment that this happened, at that moment, at that very moment, a runner came from, a messenger came from the church and told Jairus, don't bother Jesus anymore. Your little girl just died. When you hear that in your ear, when you hear that your little girl just died, that death has overcome her, you want to release his hand and back away. At that very moment, a woman touches the hem of his garment and is healed. When she's healed, his faith builds again. And he realizes something. And he said to himself, Self, what if they're wrong? What if my little girl... Because Jesus looks at him and he said, Sir, don't be afraid. Only believe. Excuse me? Don't be afraid. Only believe. This generation needs to hear that again. Don't be afraid. Only believe. I've lived through 11 months of this thing last year. 11 months. I've laid hands on people that have COVID and prayed for them. Yes, I did. And I got right back around y'all. And I can smell and I can taste and I'm feverless. Because I believe the word. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Amen. By the way, and all of them are well now. So it's, that's good news. So let me just flip to this thing. So Jesus gets to the house, and there's a, these people in there wailing. They're, they're crying. They're, they're, they're doing what you ought to do when somebody dies. The only thing is, again, according to your tradition, these are people that got paid for wailing and crying. You're paid for it. So when he gets to the house, he, I can see this man. Because I'm a pastor, and I'm my daddy. And I can, I can see him repeating what Jesus said. Faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. He heard the word of God. said, don't be afraid, only believe. And he's saying it to himself. Don't be afraid, Jairus. Don't be afraid, Jairus. Only believe. Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe. When he gets to the house, amen, he, oh, I wasn't going to preach this, but it's, it's got to be preached. It's got to be said. When he gets to the house, his wife walks out and looks at him and says, Jairus, what are you doing? Our little girl's dead. And he said to her, darling, I've said to myself, 
Self, don't be afraid. Only believe. Do you remember the woman with the issue of blood that went around town yelling, unclean, quarantined for 12 years? Yeah, I remember her. Baby, she got a whole new life today. She touched Jesus and immediately she was healed. And I've asked him to touch her. They remove all the doubters out, all the people that are crying. The scripture says that Jesus had them all leave the room. There are times you've got to get doubt away from you. Can I encourage you to quit watching the news? Can I encourage you to quit being caught up in all the doubt that's going on in the world? Amen. Get in the Word. We've got one more week of fasting left. Let's fast out through this thing, man. Let's pray out through this thing. Let's, let's read the Word through this thing. Let's see what God's going to do. So here he goes into the room. And he looks at the little girl and he says to her, Talathai kumai, which is interpreted, little girl, rise. Get up. Her eyes pop open. Her mama's eyes pop open. Her daddy's eyes pop open. Who else is in the room? Peter and JJ. Pete, James, and John. There are always those that you want around you when miracles happen because it builds their faith. Peter nudges John and said, I told you he'd do it. <laughs> yeah, you know people. You know how people are. Yeah. See, and those people only got paid, the mourners, when somebody stayed dead. Yeah, come on, that's right. So little Sunshine walks out of the room. And when she walked out of that room, every one of them, Wah! crying out there to get their money. Just lost their paycheck. And I thought to myself, self. <laughs> See, that was an accident. I, that wasn't part of it. If God were to raise his people up and open our eyes and get us to a place in life where we believe, no longer afraid, but we believe, then all of those that have been making money off of our addictions, diseases, bad choices, will lose their paycheck. Do you know when I got saved, how much money the bootleggers lost? You hear me? People don't think like that. But you got to realize that. When Jesus said, little girl, rise, she walks out. There are times in life you've got to realize that even though the odds look like they're against you, Noah's boat float. He said it ain't going to happen, but it did. Daniel did make it all night with the lions. The fire didn't burn up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. T a teenager can slay a giant. A virgin can give birth. Lazarus ain't dead. Peter did walk on water. Jesus did rise from the dead. His love is greater than our sin. Our destiny is in our hands to decide. I want you this week to say to yourself, Self, what if they're wrong? What if they're wrong? Hallelujah. Heads bowed, eyes closed. When I think of this lady who reached in and touched his garment, she came with a desire to detach herself from the issue that was out of control and to connect herself to the hem of a garment that would make everything all right. This morning, I want us to detach ourselves from things that could, that they're out of our control. I can't control it. People ask me, Pastor, what do you think about the, the uh, election? Let me tell you, I can't control what happened. I voted, I did my best, but I can't control it. Amen. So I'm not going to let it control me. I'm going to take care of my sphere of influence and take care of this house. So before you allow fate to slam the gavel of man's opinion down against you, before you let the media and the government fill you with fear over this virus, and before you call the family of God around your bedside to relinquish your purpose, ask yourself, self, perhaps, just perhaps, they're all wrong. Perhaps they're all wrong. Father, I pray over the body of Christ this morning. I speak peace to them. I speak... Uh, I speak to myself in spiritual songs and hymns. Yes, I do. 
I remind myself of the greatness of God. God, I speak over them and ask you to comfort. You strengthen us. You heal our bodies. You give us the ability to walk through life and say, literally, don't be afraid. Only believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me say it again. Don't be afraid. Only believe and in Jesus' name. In His name. Don't be afraid. Only believe in His name. Amen. Realize the power of His name. Jesus, save me. And He reaches down and picks Peter up out of the water. You got to ask yourself, self, what if they're wrong? Amen. What if they're wrong? Amen. Don't be afraid to ask. Talk to yourself. It's okay as long as you don't answer. If you do, you, <laughs> you might have a little issue there. Amen. If I get our servant leaders to take a bucket or two. Uh, Travis, you help me here. Take a bucket to the back if you would, sir. Amen. There are envelopes around you. And, of course, I'm going to have David come up here in a minute. And uh, we have some. You know, it, it, what, one of the cool things about Facebook right now is it's becoming a way to know who needs to be prayed for. Because people are crying out on there and we're picking up on that. So when you see their names, make sure you add it to your prayer list and pray for them. Would you do that? Amen. And I didn't see no guest in the house, so we got to do a little better job in getting some guests out in here. Can I get an amen? Amen. That's going to be up to you guys. I mean, I don't know nobody anymore. You know where you live. You know your neighbors. Amen. Invite them out and those watching on live stream. Listen, this live stream is so important. I want you to also give toward our, uh, to make it sure we can keep this thing going. Again, like I said, that I've already got $1,000 raised. If you'd like to give 500 toward that, 100 toward that, whatever you can. Amen. But it's something that we've got to do. Uh, we get a, a large, uh, matter of fact, our online uh, community is larger than our church right now. Amen. So people are coming back, getting back in the house. Thank God for that. Do you know I know of a church? This is going to blow your mind. I know a church that hadn't had church since March of last year. And through their online service, they raised $51 million. I don't know businesses that bring in $51 million. I mean, that's, that just, I can't. And I think to myself, self, I want people in the house. Amen. I thank God for online. I thank God for the people out there online. But I want people in the house. Amen. But don't say, there's some that are online like my mama. She's watching in Alabama. She can't get here. Amen. So that's important to reach the people. Well, we're reaching all over the world right now. But the bottom line is, I want people in the house. Amen. So I, I and, it, and by the way, don't, that's just one, in, per in, one instance I know of. There's a couple of churches like that. There are very few and in between. Most churches that, are, that have not had church since last year are shutting down. Amen. So that's the flip side of that. They've lost their congregation. And that's, that's a terrible thing. Amen. So we've got to keep reaching. Can I get an amen? amen? Amen. David, come on up here. Sir? Oh, everybody got an envelope behind the a pew there? Making sure? Yeah, Joseph, you used to be in the other campus. Yeah, I know that's right. Amen. I know, I know. I'm just making sure to... Uh, David, let me mention this. We will have a men's roundtable connect group February the 6th out in New Caney. Men, I want you to come and join me for that. Amen. 8 o'clock in the morning, we'll have breakfast together, drink coffee, and then we're going to have church. Let me tell you, we're going to have a service, uh, and I'll be lining that up. But we're, my hope is that it will be warm enough for us to do it in the tabernacle. And there's a reason why. Those benches in that tabernacle were donated to a family in this church. When they showed up out at the ranch, these benches, this man named Larry Powell took it on himself and for six, seven months turned them into furniture. I'm telling you, furniture. He stamped the little country church on them. He's polished them. He's leveled them. Six months. Larry's in the hospital right now in Humble. Amen. He's been intubated. He started out with a, a stomach virus, got to the hospital, and of course, by the time he gets to the hospital, they said he has the virus. So we, he, there's two men that I know that I'm really struggling, believing God for. Amen. I got to. That's one of them, Larry. So keep Larry Powell in your prayer. The second one is uh, Mr. Jackson. He's 94, fixing to be 95. Went and saw him yesterday. He's tired. He's just tired. He's already been through the virus. He survived it. He's on the other side of all that. But he's just tired. Amen. So either he's got to pray for vision to keep going, or we've got to release him to go be with his family. Amen. So that's just life here. And then uh, pray for my wife's mom and dad. They're not doing real well. 
So we got to keep Ma and Paul Kettle prayed up. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, pray with us as we travel to Oklahoma City and back. And that that's going to go in such a way to give God honor. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> I was about, <laughs> about to say, my man need a hand clap right there. Um, so February 2nd and 3rd will be our first week, midweek. We will have a special guest speaker, international missionary Doug Pittman. Uh, been here a few times, some of you guys may recall. Um, really, really cool guy. Uh, got some really cool stories because he's been all over the world. So got some really cool stories. Come hear him, see what he got. Uh, next week is Communion Sunday. There's something about, I don't know what it has been, but during this pandemic, that Communion Sunday just seems like it's even more special than it had been in the past. It, I, I know I'm guilty of doing religious things because everybody else is doing it, right? We've all done it, right? Take the wine, take the you know, grape juice and, uh, and the cracker, and you go through your, your motions and you just take it, right? Okay. <laughs> right? Well, there's something about, like, during this pandemic, because it says that through communion that it heals our body. There's something about it that has just come alive to me. And so I hope you guys will join us next week for communion. Um, again, the round table, uh, be here. That will be at um, 8 a.m. for all the men uh, and ladies. If you want to help out, they're going to be doing uh, some kind of breakfast. I don't know what it is. If you want to help out anyway, uh, get a hold of Judy. Anything else? Anybody got something going on that I don't know about that ain't that didn't make the bulletin? I don't want nobody coming up after church be like, David, you didn't mention. No, you didn't tell me. <laughs> Itself. That's right. I'm here. You tell me right now. We will get it announced. Looks like we're good. Well, guys, we love you guys. Again, yeah, pray for me and pastor as we take off in the morning. Uh, it looks like weather's going to be decent, maybe a little a little rainy, a little wet, but I think we're going to be fine that way. Um, and just a time to go honor Bishop. It's a good thing. Amen. Honor those who have passed. And, and more importantly, honor those who are alive. Honor them while they can be honored. You know, amen. Uh, the Bible says, seek me while I can be found. I think there's something about that. Imagine if we applied that to our everyday life, to our dads, to our moms, to our kids, to our brothers, to our sisters, seek me while I may be found. Because there may come a day when you can't do that. Amen. So get in as much as you can while you're on this earth. I've, I'm grateful for you guys. Grateful for this church. Amen. Today we're believing God for jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns. Debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. Love you guys. Go pick up your church, your kids. I'll pray you out of here real quick. Lord, thank you for everybody in this, in this house. I'm just so grateful for the fact that I got brothers and sisters in Christ that want to seek you like I do, that want to see you in this earth, Lord. It says that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so, Lord, we want earth to begin to look like heaven well how does that happen through us through your presence being ever present in our lives and so i just thank you that we be salt and light this week let us to go for everywhere our footsteps this week is holy ground so we're declaring holy ground everywhere we go in jesus name we pray amen and amen